The ahankar, the false ego, creates so many differentiations. So many different conceptions of who we are, what we want. And therefore, in this age of Kali, where ahankar, or the ego, is so strong, there, we are so vulnerable to quarrel and hypocrisy. It is practically everywhere, on every level of life, the potential of quarrel and hypocrisy. Because everyone wants to have their own interests, either individually or collectively, as the center, the focus of life. And because there are so many different mentalities, every living entity has a individual, unique, unique mentality. There are no two people in all of creation that see anything exactly in the same way. Because whatever we see is filtered through our ego, our senses, and our conceptions. What is our desires? What is our aversions? What are the conditionings of what we've been through in our life? All of our experiences? No one has had the same experiences. And therefore no one sees anything or anyone the same way. It's quite incredible. Recently, I was in Chicago, and it was snowing, so much snow. Everywhere you went, it was halfway up to your knees almost in snow. And I just have these chapels from India. And <laughs> but anyways, I was just looking out as far as the eyes could see. And then I was driving on a highway, and everywhere I was going, miles and miles and miles, on each horizon on either side was nothing but white snow. And I was thinking that in the entire span of creation, there has never been two snowflakes that are exactly like each other. Did you ever see a snowflake under a microscope? It's actually very beautiful. It's very artistic. It's an incredible design. Symmetry, balance, and each one is unique. Similar, but unique. And we, see, we just see snow, we just see whiteness. But when you look at it under a microphone, I mean a microscope, microphone, <laughs> you see something completely different. Now you have your Chopati Beach just a couple blocks away. And it's become quite clean compared to years before. Years before, it was like Chopati toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, because Srila Prabhupada used to like to walk along the ocean side and the beach, so I would think, let me do that. And it was quite um, an adventure trying to <laughs> avoid other objects <laughs> that people were placing on the beach. <laughs> but now it's better, I think. But how much have you taken interest in the sand on the beach? I'd like to show you all a photo someone sent me. This one lady from California she sent me a photograph of a magnification 
of ordinary sand on the beach. Incredible. <laughs> there are stars and crescent moons and unbelievable colors and unbelievable shapes. It actually looks like a paradise. And when you just look at the sand, it just looks like every grain of sand's the same. But when you look at it under a microscope, just, I don't know how many times magnified, every grain has a special shape and a special color and a special texture. And it's actually amazing. It's beautiful. It looks like unbelievable engineered artwork. But that artwork, with all its uniqueness and design and texture, is so small that our human eyes have no ability to even appreciate it at all. It just looks like sand. <laughs> so the perspective we have in this world is so limited. We're seeing everything according to how we are programmed. Our eyes are only programmed to see a snowflake in a certain way, or a grain of sand in a certain way. Our ears, everything, our minds are programmed, not only to see it in a certain way, but to interpret according to our own experiences and conditionings in life. To see through the eyes of Krishna, as he is giving to us through gurus, through sadhus, and through shastras or scriptures, is to actually envision, experience life on a transcendental platform beyond the ego. And that is the actual fruit of spiritual life. To rise above the ego that divides us. When we are divided from Krishna within our heart, we are also divided from each other. And union is so conditional. Srila Prabhupada explains the United Nations. Everyone has their own flag and everyone has their own interests and everyone's united. They're only united to the extent is that they have their own personal interests fulfilled. Which is a good thing in this world. But it's not very deep or sustainable. But when we actually understand our common interest, that we are all part and parcel of Krishna. We are all eternal souls. And this whole material creation is an incredible facility to realize our own potential and to realize our potential loving relationship with each other. Happiness, distress, honor, dishonor, pleasure, pain. The beautiful sand and the things that people sometimes leave in the sand, which makes it not beautiful at all to the senses. Everything, everything is a facility to understand 
our relationship with Krishna. And when we focus on that, then we can have deep relationships with each other that are transcendental to the ego and all of its incredible creations. <laughs>